designer Fleur here. Today I'm going to show you how to make this beautiful crocheted necklace. So it's using the 4 mil gemstones that come in the kit and it's crocheted onto beading um, thread. So just the normal beading thread that comes into your um, threading packs. And then I've used the beautiful silver thread as a tassel at the bottom. So to create the actual necklace itself, we need to create these little chain stitches of um, crochet. So you're going to need a crochet hook and you're going to need some beading thread. So I'm just going to get my large crochet hook and some large um, material just so you can see how to actually crochet a chain stitch. So, make so to get started with your crochet, I'm going to be using a five millimeter hook here just so you can see um, what I'm doing with this pink cord. Um, and on the actual piece itself, I used a three millimeter hook just because it was a little bit finer. Okay, so what we're gonna do to start with, we need to make a little slip knot that goes over the top. So I'm just going to bring the left hand strand over the top, folding it down on top of the working strand. So all I've done is a little loop over fold it down over the top and then what I need to do is just bring that loop through so I create a slip knot for this to go on and tighten it up with the working strand okay so I've now got my first loop in place I'm just going to tighten so it tightens on the working strand now to hold my thread, and I'm not a crocheter, but I just hold it, I wrap it around my little finger, underneath my ring finger, over the top of my third finger, and then I can crochet, okay? So I'm holding the knot, the original knot between my thumb and my first finger. I've got my thread braced against my middle finger. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make that little bit bigger that, that knot so it's not going to um, it's not going to be tight to bring that through. So you with my crochet hook in my right hand I'm going to go anti-clockwise around and pick up the thread that's over my middle finger. As I hook that thread I'm going to start to turn my crochet hook to the side so the hook's on the top at the moment, and I'm going to turn it to the side, bringing that down and through the loop that I had on my crochet hook. And there we've got our first stitch. So again, next stitch, around the crochet hook with the hook facing to the top. As you start to bring that through the loop that's already on the crochet hook, turning the hook to the side, and bringing that through. Okay, so don't pull it too tight because that will make the, the stitches too tight to come through. So again, around, pick up the, the thread. As you start to pull it through, turn the hook to the side, which makes it easier to go through the actual stitch. And you can see quite quickly we're starting to get a lovely, simple chain stitch of our crochet. And again, it's all to do with the tension, not pulling that too tight. So you can see that my index, sorry, my middle finger is helping guide the cord through. And then the hook is starting at the top and then it's coming to like a nine o'clock position as it's pulled through. And this is what's known as a simple chain in your crochet. Okay, so I'll just do a couple more just to, just to keep showing you. So hook over to the left, cord comes round over the top in an anti-clockwise position. As you start to pull through that little loop that's already on your crochet hook, the crochet hook turns to the side to allow it to go through the loop easier. Okay, so keep going and you can see just how quick these chains 
can be made. So we're going over the top all the time. I'm bracing the, the previous um, stitch on my um, index finger with my thumb, just keeping it there. Turn the hook to the side so it's easier to bring that through. So every single time we've got a nice chain stitch there that's appearing so that's just using a demo cord just a thicker cord just to show you how to actually crochet the action of crocheting a simple chain stitch okay so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move to the size that I actually made the um, the piece in and as you can see I've got it onto my um, my, my spool I've not cut anything off of the spool and I'm using just a spool tamer just to help me I've preloaded all of my gemstones so because you, you can't add any gemstones on because as you can see the, the hooks in one end um, and the reel is here so we need to preload all of our gemstones before we start now this can be a little bit more tricky to start with because obviously it's a thinner a thinner material and it is more like a wire so it will want to tighten up very quickly so if, if the needle or the, the hook just slips out just make sure you just pick that, that hook straight back up so again I'm just going to do a few more with this just so you can see now when we want to add a bead I'm just going to give myself a little bit more beading thread when we want to add a bead take one of our lovely beads and we let that go all the way down to the bottom and then we just crochet over the top of the bead and we can see now that that is now trapped in place so I'm just going to put a chain of like three stitches three to four stitches in between you can see now that one's trapped in place we've got our next three chain stitches and I'm going to bring another bead down and again take a little bit more of my um, beading thread. So as we bring that through, turn the hook to the side and bring through. And that now has stitched that little chrysocolla in place. And again, we're just going to do another couple of stitches in between so we can see now how we've got those couple of stitches in between and those beautiful chrysocolas in place so it's up to you how many stitches you put in between I'm just going to bring across the actual piece that I've done so with some of these I've used three stitches in between sometimes I've done two stitches sometimes I've even put two gemstones together so you can see here I've stitched two gemstones together and gone back to singles so you have enough gemstones in your kit you get three strands one labradorite one amazonite and one chrysocolla you get enough in there to, to sort of like really mix and match what you're doing now I've done a total of one two three four five six strands so like two of each so you can see there, I've got six strands of um, actual crochet itself. Now, what I'm going to quickly show you is how to finish the ends, okay? So I'm just going to move this out of the way. And I bring over just a little piece of uh, a demo that I've done. So as you can see, I've got all my little pieces here. And what I've done is I've gone through one crimp bead, okay? Now... I'm going to put two crimp beads in place, one that holds them all together, which is the one that you can see, and one that's going to then go through the clasp. So using my crimping pliers, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop that in to my crimping pliers, into the back station of the crimping pliers, and I squeeze them all down together. Okay, So that now has created my little horseshoe. All my ends of um, my crochet are all together and I'm just going to go back in and just make that into a nice round bead. Obviously we're going to cover this with a, uh, a crimp cover 
if you've got any at home. So now what we can do is we can actually take away quite a lot of these strands. We don't need all of these strands. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick two strands that are together. Those two there look, look perfect. Okay, and I'm going to cut away the rest of these strands. Okay, now just make sure that we don't cut all of the strands away. So I'm just going to go through and I'm just going to cut those strands away. So I'm now left with two strands. I can now go ahead and get take another quint bead. So I've got another quint bead there. And a jump ring that I can use to attach my clasp to. What I'm going to do now is exactly the same as what we would add on a normal... Um, I'm just going to trim that one off so it's the same length. How we would add a normal clasp. So I'm going to go through the crimp bead with both, both of them. If you want to just go through with one, that's entirely up to you. Bring that down. Up on my jump ring, again through both of them, back through my crimp bead, and bring that all the way down. That crimp bead now is sitting on top of the previous crimp bead and now I can go back in with my crimping pliers and do exactly the same with that crimp bead there. Squeeze and squeeze. I'm going to bring in my cutters and cut that away. And there I've got a nice neat end now with what I would do now is put two crimp covers over the top of these two. But I've now got a nice neat end that I can now attach my clasp to. And then the rest of this then you would do exactly the same on the other end. And that would make a beautiful bracelet. So I hope you've enjoyed this demo. I'm just going to pop a couple of pictures of the finished piece that's on my mannequin at the end of the video. Um, and if you have any problems, just get in touch with me on JM Guest Designer Fleur Hastings. Thank you very much.